good afternoon everyone and uh, generally you will expect uh, moderator to start by saying what an incredible honor to be seated among these ladies but let me be very clear i am petrified and terrified these are powerful women i am seated among and uh, they will bring in very good perspectives because i was just talking to them and look at the diverse field they represent starting on my left from academics to a corporate trainer on my right an entrepreneur and then a social activist in the morning session uh, dr foret fired some bullets at me and uh, i am already feeling guilty to have a entire table to myself but then uh, on my defense i am wearing a pink shirt so they should be okay with me so uh, what a what a incredible insight uh, dr foret shared in the morning that why inclusivity matters and we had some numbers starting with the video with 8.9% that was a 2021 number so you would expect the number to have increased 10 but it is only at 10% in 2024 this speakers or panelists around me they represent diverse fields and let me let me start by asking them the most simplest question now diversity as you know is is a buzzword diversity inclusivity you will you would have heard it multiple times it is powerful it is also beautiful but it's not often respected one number i think father father principal quoted a number while giving his address that us is still yet to see a woman president and we hope it happens sooner than later i'll give a number from india iit where some of the best minds of the world studies is yet to have a woman lead their student body every time a woman stands for an election in the indian institute of technology they are not voted to power right so even though people understand the importance of diversity it's not often respected and often not imbibed as a culture so my first question to all the panelists and we will start with you ma'am because you are on my right and women are always right so we'll start from that side and we we'll go to the left is okay so uh, the first question would be we heard dr forrest perspective she brings an international flavor and a global flavor but at the local level what does global inclusive uh, leadership or gender inclusive leadership mean to you and in your field why is it that important if you could share with us inclusion has also become the buzzword unfortunately or fortunately uh, because it means many things to many people many societies and uh, when we look at the the notion of inclusive leadership it means also looking at gender looking at the lens looking through the lens of intersectionality of class caste and caste and gender now you take the whole word of women gender gender when the word is spoken of it is only spoken of as men and women but there is also binaries in gender so we have to understand that that inclusion should take place the other inclusion that should take place especially in a society because i always believe global is local local they say today so therefore when we look at our society then when we talk of inclusion we have to consider the three the two big d's that is the dalits are one big example in our country where we have to think about how do we include them when they have not been included even in the even in the various sectors in society and even in the leadership even in corporate leadership even in uh, any any schools colleges there are very few uh, dalit leading the way the third point is that of the uh, transgenders i mean the transgenders also the same issue of inclusivity is there or non inclusivity why because of stigma because of certain kind of putting them down because of certain kind of prejudices that have been built in consciously consciously built in in society the third thing is that of disability the third d disability and uh, the you see it's so difficult i don't think any of us can fathom it how difficult it is to be a dalit to be a woman and to be a disabled woman i mean it is unimaginable and so if you are in that category and you are not included and therefore you are not included it's going to i mean it's really affecting the whole of society the aspect of how inclusivity in our in our organization we do look at is by the way we structure it that is we by and large we work with the dalits by and large we work with the muslims the other thing is of that communal uh, disinclusion that uh, that takes place far more today 
so therefore we work with muslims we work with uh, minority sexual minorities we work with dalits so we work with women so therefore inclusive leadership is something that is always uh, part and parcel of our entire structures i mean there's no there's no need to have any kind of theory about it it is a perspective that flows and i feel that invisibility is i mean inclusion is just not enough inclusion should also have a voice you know today for name sake there are many comp- there are many institutions which have lots of women there or lots of people on the board or lots of women on the board but they have no voice so there's no there's no point in talking about inclusion if there's no voice to that inclusivity taking a cue from what uh, dr arijit mentioned and um, what uh, dr forret uh, actually said she said about 8.9% women and he also talked about women uh, in leadership roles in finance you know especially in india also we see a large number of women in uh, most of the banks and financial institutions i'm going to wear the hat of being an entrepreneur and then uh, talk a little bit about my insight on inclusivity here in the 80s and 90s when i used to go and make presentations at international events and global conferences i would say that the number of women entrepreneurs in india was about 10 to 12% and that's what it was you know and that was in the 90s we are now in 2020s and uh, the number is around 12 to 15% we've got more than two decades happen and we really haven't grown much but let me again then put an another point there in the 90s when i used to go and make presentations that was the time when we had no internet right so it was not the google era where we could ask a question on information but at that point of time and i would talk about challenges to women entrepreneurship development most of it was it would always be begin with access to finance and access to finance still continues to be a challenge though there are hundreds and thousands of mahila schemes but uh, yet there is that policy practice gap access to information and those days access to information was tough as i said we did not have google we didn't have a world wide web where we could get and access to information this day and this age is at the click of a button wherever you are yet the growth of women entrepreneurs is far and few and less so that's that's a point to think about as to why so i did and being the tech space i run a business manufacturing transformers in tech area so i went to my own college uh, the university of vishwesh college i was trying to understand what is the level of participation of women in in the engineering college and the engineering space and when i was in college there were only nine girls in that entire college when i joined up uvc this was way back in the 80s today college is full of girls right so when i went in we came in as 45 number of girls so that was a huge number for that college now there are so many girls in the college especially engineering and i also understand that the percentage of marks that a girl has to attain has to be higher than that of a boy otherwise there'd be more boys in the college than i mean there'd be more girls in the college than boys so that is reverse right so the you girls are doing so well yet there are reverse uh, barriers for us to get into that college obviously for their own reasons to have a balanced uh, college uh, atmosphere or environment yet participation of women in entrepreneurship is far and less so come of course there are various other reasons corporate uh, experiences corporate uh, positions are better but quite often these are situations which we think about happening in india and at our level but i remember in early 2000 when i went to the university of twente which is in the netherlands and um, i went because those days uh, internship was not was was very little in india and that was the time when i there were students from netherlands who would come to do internship in india so i went up and met a professor in the university of twente which was a technology university and i went through the college to meet him because i had already had that student so i wanted to talk to him and he said 
uh, and uh, I mean, he was generally talking about it. And I noticed that while I was walking up, I didn't see a single girl around. There was no girl student. So I was a little surprised. We have girls only colleges, but I never knew there would be boys only colleges. So I went and asked him and he said, well, Umar, this is a technical university and we had hardly have any girls studying in a technical university. So it really, it's a pat on our back in India that even in those days, we had more girls in our technical institutions. Yet, we need to bring in a lot more inclusivity. And on with that note, I'll just pass on the mic and so that we have, this is just some points to th ponder about. And another point is, of course, the fact that it took 108 years for an, for an institution which was founded by Sir and Vishwesh Raya in way back in 1816. It took them 108 years for me to get elected as a vice president. It's not that I did not try, but it, it you know, those glass ceilings are still very hard to break. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, just to go back to you on one point, because I think in the normal discussions, we always feel that we were not given enough chances, maybe, as you refer to a term called glass ceiling. But do you somehow, all of you uh, can take up this question as well. Do you somehow feel that women are not trying hard enough to break the girl at, uh, wall at times, or the ceiling at times? Uh, I agree there, but the ones who do try, I always find that women have to constantly prove themselves. That's the situation, right? Women have to. I've been in this business, even to date, even a few months back, I remember getting a call from a customer for my business. And he said, he was talking to me, I was talking to him and he says, Madam, can you connect me to your technical person? Somewhere, they do not think that the woman is, a tech, is the tech in that company. So I think it's a mindset and I think uh, maybe Archana will talk a lot about mindful living and mindful uh, uh, needs. But I think there is a mindset in the environment that needs to change. It is changing. I'm not saying that it is not. I mean, events like this, you know, bring, brings about a lot of awareness, but uh, it's going to take some time. So, if, you know, if I've done it, then there'll be many others to follow. And you, I think we need more and more women role models. And it's very important for women. Somewhere we look for role models as women. So there is a psyche in women and there is an environment that needs to be taken. Why do you ask this question always to women? Why don't you ask the men, why don't they try hard enough? Because you see, this is a very, uh, very uh, sta standard question. It is not that we don't try. What are the cultural impediments in this way of trying? You know, how much of scope does the entire family, the entire community, the entire society give to women who have tried and have gone forward? I have many examples of girls who have negotiated with their families in such a way in order to just do their BCom. You know, it's such a hard negotiation. So you can't say that they don't try hard enough. I'm sorry, I disagree. Curse of being outnumbered on stage. Not on the <laughs> Uh, our topic is inclusion and diversity. Uh, I, as I look forward to all of you and look from this perspective, I think you all deserve a round of applause because a huge representation of female students today and female staff members. So I think our conference has done justice. And with that, I will move on to Archana ma'am, hoping that you will not scold me also. I'm very fond of you, Abhijit, so I will not. Arijit, sorry. See, there you go. Uh, no, not an issue. Uh, Shakespeare Naam told me what's in a name. Yeah, exactly, what's in a... exactly. All right, thank you, thank you so much. Amazing points that were of course shared earlier in the day by the keynote speaker and then following by the other two panelists. I have no disagreement, so first, peace, okay? But uh, let me go with a few other important points that I believe we should start thinking because I'm thinking we are at this conference saying that let's start looking at these issues that have been existing. We have been talking about it. We have made some progress. As, as you know, we have been talking, but then we need to make a lot more progress and we have to make that quantum jump. So what could be some of those ideas that can help us in making that quantum jump? One such specific idea that I would like to start my talk with today in the panel discussion is think about enough of gender, equality, inclusion, etc. that's there. We need to continue our effort, but becoming gender agnostic. I think the problem is we are looking at people as gender. If in our homes we can start, you will see all the girls who are sitting here would agree with me. 
those of us who have been fortunate to be raised in families where our parents were gender agnostic to the opportunities they provided us we never saw so much of barriers barriers existed but they were not so big in our minds because when we were growing up and within our families we did not see that as a basic issue on the basis of which your opportunities are provided right um number 2 yes i totally agree with uh, uma that uh, we have to prove 10x times more about our ability for example even when a woman uh, goes out of college now why there are not so many entrepreneurs or people who are doing so well earlier we had a situation why women need education ghar hi to sambhalna hai you have to go and manage the house managing house was important i would not say i would not put that down even today there are many important things managing budget to relationships that a woman does in a family which i am not going to put down and say only a working woman is doing something great number 1 then it was felt education is only preparing you for working so why do you need education but go little before the industrial process when women leaders existed in india kittu rani chinnamma was to rani lakshmi bhai you know nobody asked whether you are man or woman when opportunity came they were already skilled they did not start learning how to use the weapon after their husbands died or fathers died they were already skilled ready and when the opportunity came they took on that opportunity and proved themselves to be as good as or sometimes surprisingly even better than their male counterparts so i think also the other point is all the men leaders and men achievers who are who have been there who are there who are progressing are because of some women who have been behind them so whether they acknowledge it or not i think most of them do their mothers are role models who allowed them who taught them certain value systems even their wives are great supports because of whom they are taking part time jobs they are managing the children they are managing different things there for the man so you know is that only the man is the leader or is representing everybody who supported him and he just happens to be a man and same thing applies for women if i as a family member as i as a woman have to become a leader everybody men or women gender agnostic people around me have to support me to be a leader i need that support men also need women also need without that support nobody will be in those positions where people are sitting so my humble request today would be to really give a, a thought uh women have to stop thinking of themselves to a large extent as women where it's not necessary i genuinely would say with my heart on my chest that i genuinely when i get into discussions i don't think i'm all the time aware that i'm a woman and lot of us like uma said when we all started our journeys right we were the only one in the room right as a woman i would go with delegations to foreign countries and then 20 men and one woman but i was so used to it that that's it so today also actually i forget that aspect so i think we have to stop talking too much about reservation we don't need reservation i don't need to be on reservation quota all of us have come where we have come without any reservation we are so useful if you see and want to make use of the contribution we can make be intelligent to at least not come in our way because that will also help you whether it is a family whether it is a community it is a society it is a country or whatever and india has been very progressive actually we are very fortunate all of us who are sitting that we have had from the great queens you know having as examples to uh, people who were who have been presidents prime ministers governors for so many years now we have multiple people at the helm of affairs as women 
but it in recent times we have started looking and comparing how many women how many men and another one last point is we spoke of role models and i agree for a very long time many times we do talk about we all need role models we want to feel motivated think of all the people who are great role models did they have a role model there no time to think of role model they believed in themselves and believed in what they can do and what they want to do so much that actually they couldn't see the barriers they did not look at role models when the first prime minister happened president happened governor happened or a queen who went to the battle happened or whatever happened she just happened and then she became a role model for others so my request is if you want to be the first astronaut scientist god knows whatever else is your dream forget whether you are the first last in between second third fourth not even important if you believe you have it in you to contribute and that is you as a man or a woman just get out there and do it yeah nothing can stop you you are unstoppable just you need to believe it that's for me i am able to relate with what uh, archana ma'am said i am able to relate with you both as well like it's just that yeah i'm turning this side yeah, yeah. no i am able to relate the reason is with the senior students this is one line i used because there was an opening for a sales job and the girls were not willing to take it up and so this is something i used in the class yesterday at around 3 o'clock when i was leaving the class that sometimes you have to stop and thinking that you're a woman and just believe that you are there to contribute to the economy that is something i spoken of so a very very valid point yes ma'am come to good afternoon so we're talking about inclusivity and uh, diversity so coming from uh, uh, psychology background so we are also talking about numbers how many women should take up leadership uh, roles or get into leadership positions here most often uh, i think the world always looks forward for masculine leadership style so we need to understand here uh, it's uh, more about sensitizing the men uh, rather than looking at women taking up uh, the leadership uh, positions we need to look at uh, the core of a woman's personality which is emotional intelligence so that is uh, you know empathy compassion and uh, you know having the genuine concern uh, for the uh, well-being of the workers or since i am a teacher so the students so here of course it's important that we need to uh, get more women taking up uh, leadership roles but at the same time if, if that doesn't happen you know maybe there are some blockages or something like that which we are of course uh, trying to you know uh, change it but if still if doesn't happen i think we need to take up the responsibility sensitizing the men uh, you know uh, into having developing the emotional intelligence more uh, so that they also play a part as how women leaders would uh, you know Uh, play a role in any position that is there so i think uh, from that point of view I, so inclusivity it's as far as numbers concerned good but then uh, as far as you know talking about emotional intelligence also is very very important thank you uh, thank you ma'am because you represent this uh, wonderful field of psychology and uh, do you do you see a difference in the way men and women approach leadership is there a difference yeah. before i begin even women who are uh, taking up leadership positions Uh, very often they try to mimic uh, you know male style of leadership and what happens is they become very bossy then so that is uh, very uh, sad you know so m- because being a woman i think they should be more sensitive in understanding you know or taking up a leadership role where they can you know make a huge difference but this is often sometimes happens but then here i think um, the women uh, definitely uh, their approach towards uh, the other party will be Uh, you know very genuine and because they are uh, basically want to look into the well being and not looking at any other aspect there so that is important but for i think uh, for a male uh, leader it's more of uh, to do with the outcome of whatever that they do here it's the process of what is happening i think that would be the basic difference that you can see in women and uh, men uh, there's an example uh, from a survey that was done uh, about 2 years back uh, ksrtc survey and as you know now there are many women conductors there are even women drivers in the public transport 
So a survey was done after a lot of women were enrolled into the uh, into the uh, into being conductors, and the KSRT did a survey. After one year, they found that the revenues that came into the KSRT had increased a lot, and this was only because of I would say it only because of women were large by and large take responsibility, take because they manage the budgets at home. They are able to manage these budgets, and also that they are honest. I'm not saying boys are not honest, but women are honest and much more responsible. The feeling of responsibility and accountability is developed in them much earlier. So, therefore, this was found out from the survey. Uh, just, uh, I would like to add to what I mean. Just to ask. Uh, Archana, ma'am. Not Archana. Uh, Sunila, ma'am. Sunila, Sunila. Sunila is that. Um, uh, I think it's largely to do with the social construct. I don't think there's anything like um, men behavior and uh, women behavior, or men being bossy. Like is this a normal thing that is thought in social construct? Is from childhood it is thought to all of us that men should not cry, boys should not cry in public. Is it true? You don't cry, no. You are all machines. So the thing is that boys should not cry in public because then they are called women. And women should not laugh and jump and talk loudly and aggressively because then they are to be not considered as women. So this whole idea, no, of how women should be, how men should be, the stereotypes that are there that are built in from an early stage makes us look at everything like that, and therefore we lose our confidence while doing that. So the whole entire issue of confidence that is built in from an early age, the social construct that is developed in such a way to keep us where we are, and therefore that is what we should understand. Okay. Uh, I will take a risk, and uh, because there will be more bullets fired at me, I know. But I'll take a risk and get into something little controversial. Um, while Dr. Foret was presenting her slides, uh, she talked about few challenges women face, and one of the points was sexual harassment. And uh, do you believe, uh, or is there a chance that men also face sexual harassment in the workplace? They do, right? They do. Yes. So, so is there a chance that it is not a case of gender, but a case of power? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Please, because yes. I, I had a talk with John C. I just thought I should defend men, men, men today. Yes. So, yeah, sure. we are not always bad. So, I thought I, 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 as I was listening, I was thinking that. Sometimes we also go through a lot of harassment and problem and maybe it's not about gender that much as much as about power because when you have power you sometimes lose sense I don't think you can generalize yeah. it's like not one yardstick for this there are women who have taken advantage of a situation and I've been on posh committees uh, and I know that when it comes to a time of appraisal and these are women right and uh, appraisal of women uh, staff, there are a number of cases of posh increase. That means they use that as, a, as an advantage of you know, bringing in a lot of false claims. Now that is not necessarily the one and only reason for posh cases because there are actual situations happening and those are also there. It isn't that we can throw that out of the window. So it's a case to case basis but yes, there are women who take advantage of a situation. And I've also seen where men do take advantage of a situation. So, so sometimes it's not about gender. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's not about gender, it's more about people and people. people's attitude. And also just to add to what is being said, uh, what I have understood uh, during my interaction with different people and going through research on this, is uh, the sexual harassment during childhood, to my shock, had a higher percentage in boys than in girls. We don't talk about it. So this is one thing that we really, really have to take it up seriously because boys are bullied, boys go through sexual harassment, but then it is said, this is not something we can bring out. We only talk about girls going through this and there is a social stigma attached to it. There is as much a stigma. In fact, the boys don't, they are, as, as ma'am was mentioning here, that, you know, boys don't cry. Boys are not even supposed to go and tell their family about it. And the family will think, 
I mean, what kind of a boy are you if you went through this? But a lot of boys go through that, um, and that matter is not even reported to the family. So now the issue is the way we are dealing with these when it comes to adult life. Personalities, I think, are already distorted. By the way, psychology already distorted. So we are dealing with adults where men or women. they have had different difficulties for which we don't have a ecosystem where they could go to for solutions or support and therefore adults are behaving the way they are behaving being not sensitive to certain things because they themselves are probably a victim sometimes you think if i am a victim i will be more sensitive but actually sometimes absolutely the opposite can happen right so and also the uh what we are talking the previous point about men women right trying to copy uh, masculine style and stuff like that we have to also just i would like to add while all of that is right naturally men and women are different species i mean simply we are different so there is no point in trying to be like this or like that and i think like let's look at you know colleges teachers families there are certain areas in which the women of the house makes decisions and they are best in that especially for managing finance even in homes women have i mean it's just traditionally unknown that they are better just hand over the money to her and the family will run comfortably right so there are certain areas where we are naturally we have a plus like emotional intelligence as she was mentioning there are areas and there are certain areas similarly that men are naturally better but then we there are exceptions in both and we are not absolutely it's not black and white i'm only like this or only like that so i think that is why it is said from our thumb print to the hair dna everything we are unique beings so again i would come back to uh, being mindful of the fact that become gender agnostic don't put yourself in any bracket be you the world will adjust i think i think uh, for the young minds uh, uh, the young minds who are listening to this i think one point uh, ma'am brings out both of them that life may not be always black and white give a chance to the gray also that there might be beautiful mysteries in the gray part as well so do not be binary uh, at all the times um uh, do you have a point just to add to what ma'am just uh, she said now uh, to be uh, gender agnostic yeah so that's very important because we are looking at here as humans so when i say emotional this is human centered heart centered so that is what that we need to focus upon i i will request all the panelists uh, to keep their answers little short so that we can go and okay. cover a few more areas i just That's bring in answer. two points here which i think has not been addressed is that it's an elephant in the room the whole issue, when we talk of women gender all this uh the elephant in the room is sexuality and i think from the point of view of sexuality this has to be addressed so there is one medium that does not take into account whether it is men women transgender whatever what is that medium and that is what all of you are handling every day the medium of technology the technology and the new web related the new crimes that are coming up especially as far as uh, not just youngsters but even children are concerned it doesn't matter whether you're a small child you're a small girl you're a small boy or you're a transgender or whatever it has just it has just overcome all that barriers and as uh, i mean and as and is going on its path of uh, really shaking up our society yeah, I, i'll just uh, talk about little bit about who we are uh, because uh, i think ma'am started this uh, talk with the numbers where you say that women are not there so much and i think if you were there at the start uh, father mentioned that 55% of our students are women females and the the similar percentage is reflected even higher in the leadership roles and the staff we have a lot of female staff and we are an academic force to reckon with now and a huge credit goes to the efforts that the women have put so a huge round of applause to all the women seated here yeah 
when you wear pink you automatically have a feminine side to yourself so i'll be i'll be pressing so yeah um, dr forrett gave a number uh, that she mentioned that globally 32% of businesses are head by women right so i quickly check the indian number the indian number is stronger 2021 39% of indian businesses were head by headed by women so india is setting a trend and we are our average is better than the global average so well done to us but this is 2021 and in 2024 the number has gone down to 34 do you think something is happening in these numbers why women from 39% as leading businesses are coming down to 34 this year so when i when i spoke to dr forrett during the break she said covid may have something to do with it i think it is more uh, the at the present the 2024 scenario and i'm sure all the students will agree that there is a huge 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 focus on startups right so there are a large number of startups so the numbers are overall increasing and the number of women startups are still growing very incrementally but the number of larger number of startups when you really look at the number game yes the you know probably we've come down from 39% to 34% but the number of enterprises that are getting registered overall are far higher so i uh, personally presume that it is but i still would like to see a larger participation of women in boardrooms we do have a mandate by the government that at least in all the listed companies there have to be two women directors independent directors yet we do not have that number there one quite often one or two issues which i can uh, kind of highlight f- for the girls here to ponder about and to focus on you know as an opportunity is that we are not trained to be directors most of us get training in in now entrepreneurship development cells in colleges we get trained to be you know to be a startup entrepreneur but we really not trained even entrepreneurs themselves are not trained to be board directors so that's a big thing so if there is an organization called iod institute of directors have an opportunity take a look at their site and see the kind of training programs that they have and it's great if you can you know be on the boards because the kind of macro knowledge that you get on being on boards is great but of course i would suggest to most students here to get some experience uh, of you know big part of companies before you get there but that is an area that you need to think of and many companies uh, quite often get their family members to be those two representatives on their board you know it could be a distant relative or a friend so in the process you know you really don't get women uh, with some experience to be on the boards though there are many uh, so that's an area but i think even that's good because you know beginning this woman who comes in as a relative or a friend to be part of the board listens keeps keeps quiet but i think over a period of time you know women think we are great thinkers we are great creators um so we you know they would question what's happening right or wrong and will definitely participate so it's encouraging but if you're looking at exponential growth we need a lo- large large number of pool of women directors let's make it brief because i would like to talk from the other spectrum as far as our experience goes especially after covid uh 90, 85% of our senior citizen domestic workers lost their livelihoods until today they don't have it the rest who are working the rest of the over are not senior citizens but the rest of the women of course lost half their jobs they are going back to jobs which are uh, paying them half of what they were earning before maybe it is lesser hours of work and lesser payment but they are got these semi jobs a study done further outside has shown that like i call the all the street vendors uh, best women entrepreneurs you have Uh, so uh, a study done over this spectrum of street vendors service sector you know running small hotels all over all this has taken a back seat after covid and it shows no sign of it gaining up and we have the recent statistics when we were doing a study on uh, for a report card a report card of the 10 years of the government gone by uh, we found that women are more now into unpaid work and it is getting worse day by day do you see a role for institutions academic institutions 
to instill or imbibe a sense of leadership in the female and i i i won't use the word male and female because i think uh, both of you have pointed out and mamal also has pointed out that when we talk about gender we always go think binary but let us talk about unrepresented people because as a woman there is a challenge but if you're a woman of color your challenge multiplies right so if you are if you're a woman it's challenging but if you're a woman who is disabled let's just say the challenge multiplies so how what will be your advice for the young girls who are seated here how can they because Uh, leadership is about this and this both right this is equal for both of them in the classroom but how do they grow this what the courage it takes to lead an organization the courage it takes to take risks what is your advice to them and what is your advice to institutions i think the answer is conscious leadership be it for men or for women and it is basically starting with self awareness a leader who is not completely self aware trust me they can be very bad leaders at the end of the day however they have arrived at where they have arrived because sometimes the way we give weightage to why people are in the board rooms or become directors uh, we find that there is a flaw in the whole method actually right so number 1 i think self awareness number 2 having absolute clarity about each one's ability and capability not all of us are meant to lead let's be clear about that some of us are great for research jobs some of us are great to lead organizations some of us are great instruction followers etc etc and a leader needs a follower also you cannot be a leader of nobody right and all that story continues so my uh, thing is second step is once you have clarity about your ability and capability based on that have a clear cut road map be aware of what are the strengths you have that will take you further in that road map to achieve your goal and what are the loopholes the barriers that you have within you forget the outside barriers for for one men or women we need to learn the art of self management then go to the step of self leadership do you know how to manage yourself before you are saying make me a leader for others right and then come to learning all those things that you are talking about the the tricks and trades the tools of leading others that's actually a very small segment out there important circumstantial leadership based on the circumstance different kind of leadership you might want to use but i think the first three steps if all educational institutions could have a course if i may call that right for all kind of students i don't think this is only for people who want to become entrepreneurs or anything ba bcom bsc whatever btech whatever everybody should learn at least to be a leader within themselves and have absolute clarity on their own the rest i think will fall into place so to be a leader so i think uh, every one of us um, are a leader in a sense but how well we bring it out that is very very important many a time uh, the qualities that are there in us go unnoticed because we don't have those stimulating environment or uh, the exposure so it kind of remains dormant in the individual so one needs to uh, understand the quint uh, quint essential qualities that are there uh, of a leadership uh, and then uh, bring it out wherever it is possible you know as she said you don't have to lead somebody but then you can always be a leader to yourself in what you're going to achieve set goals uh, or uh, set uh, you know uh, things for yourself so that you grow gradually uh, in your own sight as a leader and that will kind of you know give you a more focus on uh, bringing out that leadership more uh, those qualities uh, more confidently outside you know so i think that is something we need to uh, teach the students to nurture start nurturing it uh, at a very early stage so they all of them can be called as leaders and i remember in the earlier days gender discussions and gender topic discussions used to be only with the un and then it moved on to you know the government uh, women welfare uh, you know ministry taking up such uh, discussions it moved on in the last i would say two decades only with associations of women entrepreneurs i'm part of many of those and each of these organization would have gender you know discussions on gender topics 
and now this year i don't know how many colleges i visited during the last one month where they've had topics on gender whether it's the women's day celebration or it all leads to those and this is the mind of the students right who are part of this uh, discussion and like it or not i believe uh, you know this is something which is uh, very essential that the institutions are doing this so kudos to you and uh, please keep that up because there is a lot of uh, you know learning that happens and i think it's a round of applause to st claret also to having this discussion today and to every student here like it or not they are going to have this thought today you know what they listened during this panel discussion to the keynote address and these uh, sets the process in mind leadership comes from within you you know wherever you are and as archana said probably everybody need not be the managing director of a company or of an uh, enterprise you probably played playing a leadership role within your family within your community also and that's also leadership roles so these are points that you take with you and i'm sure every boy and girl in this room will have those thoughts so delve on those thoughts don't throw it out of the window and you know keep adding value to it share it with others and let's say in the next decade we see a much better platform of equal opportunities to everybody and we don't have to have such discussions thank you just to add my two bit uh, i don't envy any of you all in this uh, in this auditorium and outside any of the youth living in this century in this millennium because the amount of bombardment you are getting the amount of choices that you are getting the amount of advices that you are getting and not to say only our panel but from your click that mobile of yours so you are getting enough of advices enough of turning your directions all the time i just like to say this that uh, never be scared of your cultural identity realize your own cultural identity and protect it and say no matter what i will go by that uh, so therefore it means that building that kind of self confidence in yourself and it doesn't come from anywhere it comes from yourself you cannot get it in a shop you cannot get it anywhere so that confidence that comes from yourself only comes from a philosophy that i strongly believe in called ubuntu ubuntu is a philosophy which says i am because you are and if we can introduce that kind of philosophy to say we are all because we are all because of each other so we uh, therefore enhance a sense of respect and equality and that is the most important thing for any one of us whether it's leaders whether it's not leaders i am not bothered about that as human beings she talked about ubuntu i am because you are and you are because we all are and we all share that and it's an african uh, proverb so i'm sure most of you have heard it so we have an organization called ubuntu consortium it's an association of women entrepreneur associations pan india so i just thought if you'd like to know a little bit more about what ubuntu consortium does visit our website www.ubuntuconsortium.org or .com and you'll get to know a little bit about what we do in our service to women entrepreneurs associations and if you want to be part of an organization there's another organization called emerge india e m e r g india.org do look at that and you can be part of that and these are for women and all the girls here so you can make use of that opportunity thank you so uma ma'am ended it exactly the way an entrepreneur should have ended it with two websites for you to follow yeah uh, so uh, extremely proud to say i think uh, we had a brilliant discussion today and extremely proud to say ma'am mentioned that behind every man who has achieved success there are women and uh, today i have achieved success i have become better in the last one hour and there are no four women behind me they are not ahead of me they're right alongside me i think that is what is gender inclusive leadership that it's not about who is ahead it's about bringing and taking steps together for a better world thank you so much